Let's talk about shops and stalls. That's everything from food and drink stands to the first aid kiosk and souvenir stalls. Having a wide variety of shops and stalls throughout your park is key to keeping guests happy and can be a valuable income source, especially in parks where guests pay to enter rather than per ride. YouTuber Dirklink has produced an incredibly comprehensive guide to what you can charge for every shop in the game. If you just want to set maximum price for the shops you build, I've put a couple of links in the description to his guide and pricing spreadsheets. But obviously, I'd love you to stick around. So, if you want to know where is best to place the shops, intuitive ways to maximise your revenue, and if it's okay to charge for toilets, spoiler, it is, then stick around. First up, the basics. The stuff you probably already figured out. There are four types of shops and stores in the game. Food, drink, merchandise, and what I'll call guest needs. Food and drink do what you'd expect, and reduce a guest's hunger and thirst bars, making you money and allowing them to continue their day in the park. If you don't have food and drink stalls, hungry or thirsty guests will leave the park. Merchandise stalls are just that, selling all manner of mementos such as stuffed toys, hats and t-shirts. This includes the information kiosk, which helps guests find their way around by selling park maps. Finally, guest needs. Toilets relieve a guest's toilet bar and the first aid kiosk can make a sick guest feel better much quicker than if they simply sit down and wait to recover. This, along with the ATM, is the only shop and store you can't charge for. So, what helps make these stands more profitable? Well, there are a number of contributing factors. Firstly, the weather. It makes a difference. So much of the way the game works is based on real life, so think of it like this. If you're in a cold, snowy area, are you more likely to want an iced tea or a hot coffee? So, hot drinks have a premium in colder weather. Likewise, on a hot day, will you be more likely to want an ice cold soda or a hot chocolate? This means you can price accordingly. Charge more for hot drinks in cold weather and cold drinks in hot weather. And probably don't bother with hot drinks in hot climates. So, what is cold? Well, for Roller Coaster Tycoon purposes, it's 11 degrees or lower, and hot temperatures are anything 21 degrees or warmer. And then there is rain. It does two things. One, nobody will buy sunglasses, ice cream, candy floss, or even a balloon in wet weather. But, as seasoned Roller Coaster Tycooners know, umbrella price limits go out of the window when it rains. Guests will pay literally anything to get one. I've never exploited this because I like to keep my play fairly realistic, but that said, any theme park would charge a premium for branded souvenir umbrellas. Just make sure to reduce the price or close the stall when the rain stops, because in dry weather guests will complain about being overcharged and lose happiness, impacting on other ride and stand profits and your park rating. You may even get a worst value park award. Happiness plays a part. A happier guest doesn't seem to mind being overcharged, but an unhappy guest will be more frustrated and claim it's too expensive. There's a limit, of course. As in real life, different guests have different opinions of what is too expensive and what isn't, so the game uses a random calculation each time, with inset parameters which may be considered to be realistic. Of course, every shop has an upper limit where simply nobody will make a purchase because the item is too expensive. There's a few ways you can figure out what to charge. Use Dirklink's spreadsheet to find the maximum amount each shop can charge without turning any customers away. Use some trial and error and your own experience of the game, and or use your common sense, what is a fair price for a burger? But remember, the game first came out in 1999, there's been a lot of inflation since then. And here's a hint, the default price is always low, so you can safely add a little maybe 10 or 20% to that. If lots of guests say it's good value, either increase the price or take it as a compliment and hope to earn the best value park award. Just keep an eye on your hourly profit. You don't want shops and stalls to be losing money, and they should all make a healthy profit, except from first aid rooms, ATMs and bathrooms, which we'll come on to. So where should you place shops? First of all, across the park. It is important to have them well distributed as guests will get hungry in all corners of your park. So having them all in one place doesn't work just like in a real park where you'll find different food stands and food courts across the park. So, should you build food courts? Well, in theory, not really, as guests won't carry two items of food, and once they have consumed one item, their hunger bar will be low, so they won't buy any more food either. But it could make sense to position food, drink, toilets, and a type of souvenir stand altogether. Some food does have an impact on thirst. 
For example, fries, hot dogs, noodles, and particularly fried chicken will make a guest much thirstier than they were before they ate, meaning a drink store close to one of these stands will do very well. But for guest convenience and more profitable shops, don't have two food stands close to each other. That said, not every food stand completely satisfies a guest's hunger. Most do, but some, such as ice cream and candy floss stands, only reduce the bar by 50%, which, again, is realistic. Candy floss, or cotton candy, would not fill you up as much as a hot dog. So, it could be possible to place two of these snack-type stands close to each other and find hungry guests buy ice cream, eat it, and then buy cotton candy, or candy floss, as us Brits call it. So, how else can you improve your revenue? Here are some suggestions. Happy guests buy more and spend more. So put souvenir stands, hats, t-shirts, balloons, whatever you have available to sell, close to popular rides. Variety is important too. Guests will only buy one hat, one t-shirt, one balloon, but they will buy one of each if they are happy when they pass the stand. Get an information kiosk at the front of your park. It's logical, right? When guests arrive, they want a map and they will pay for them. If it's a wet park, make sure you have additional information kiosks and souvenir stalls across the park. If you want to, go wild with your pricing when it rains. Don't overdo it. You only have so many guests and they are only hungry so often. Don't forget benches for guests to eat and litter for them to dispose of their empty food trays, otherwise your handyman will have a lot of work to do. And then there is toilets. I don't know of a real park anywhere in the world that charges for them, but they have a running cost and guests do not mind paying a small fee to use them. So I always alleviate that running cost by charging 10p for toilets, and 20p is also acceptable to guests without them complaining or becoming unhappy. Finally, use on-ride photo sections. Any ride that allows them should have one, because after the initial outlay for the track piece, they don't cost you a thing to run. Guests who enjoyed the ride will buy one, and they will buy them for multiple rides if they are happy. The happier they are, the more likely they pay a good price for them. So, there you have it. Everything you need to know about shops and stalls in Roller Coaster Tycoon. Use them wisely and you'll see a more satisfied guest base and a significant increase in revenue, giving you more to spend on new, exciting rides for your park. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tips and tricks on Roller Coaster Tycoon.